I'm going to ask you please to get your Bibles and open them to the familiar passage of Scripture that we've been concentrating on for uh, a few services now, and I'll close out my thought on this today. I've been preaching on the subject, Do You Have What It Takes? And uh, we're going to add to that today. Um, but before we do, I was doing some studying, and Sam kind of turned me on to some stuff about Cinco de Mayo that I did not know. And really, in Mexico, it's not that big of a holiday. I mean, they do celebrate it, but not like, you know, Americans just look for a reason to party. <laughs> You know, we, we just throw a barbecue about anything. And so, um, so we celebrate it in a greater degree than they do. Uh, on May the 5th in 1860, I think it was 1862, May the 5th, there was a, uh, what historians call, and I found it to be very interesting, uh, what the literature that I read anyway, it was called a ragtag group of makeshift Mexicans <laughs> that were uh, numbered at about 2,000 men in their little city in east central Mexico was attacked by 6,000 French men who had come in by ship. Um, And the 2,000 men, the historians write, fortified themselves and defeated the French, losing under 100 men while uh, slaying over 500 of the Frenchmen that came in to attack. Therefore, they were able to save their city. And um, and it is celebrated today as Cinco de Mayo. And I I thought that was very interesting, especially the way the historians use the word fortify or fortified their city, because that has been our concentration. It will be again today, just for a few more moments. So if you have your Bibles, open to Luke chapter 14 and verse number 28. One of the keys to the story about Cinco de Mayo is the battle didn't take long. It lasted from morning to mid-afternoon, and it was over. And they had won the victory by defending what was theirs. How many of you know sometimes you might not have very much, but it's yours? (laughs) And you ought to fight for what is yours. Amen. It may not be everything you want, but fight for what you have. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus says, Which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? And that's a deep question. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. Everyone say fortify. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth a delegation and desires conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he hath, He cannot be my disciple. I'll continue my message this morning. Do you have what it takes? And uh, if I could subtitle this message, it would be fortifying your future. I want you to hug three people and tell them it is time to fortify your future. Amen. Now, let us pray. I'm going to ask you to put your Bibles down after you hug those few necks and let's lift our hands high toward heaven please in honor to the king of kings and the lord of lords the bible says lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting father we lift up holy hands today and we say to you have your way speak lord your servants are listening and we need a word from you because we have we consider that we have now crossed over a critical threshold in time and history And we are more than ready to do our part to advance your kingdom in our generation. And we submit our lives to you, saying unto you, use us, Lord, for your glory. Receive the glory, receive the honor, receive the adoration from our life. We bless you. And right now with our hands lifted, we thank you for bringing us through everything you have brought us through. As we look back over our life, we all realize today if it was not for your mercy, if it was not for your grace, if it was not for your goodness, we would not be standing here today. 
And Father, for that reason, we give you praise with uplifted hands and we open our mouth and we give you praise today. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. And now, Lord, we begin to give you a pre-praise for what you're about to do. As we look into our future, we realize there are great days ahead for us. There are great years ahead for us. There are great weeks, great moments ahead for us. And we give you praise for that. If you can peer over to your future with great excitement, let's clap our hands and shout to God with the voice of triumph one more time. Everybody. Come on, y'all. Put those hands together real, real good and open your mouth. Amen. To the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we bless you. High five three people and tell them it's on in the building today. Amen. It's on in the building today. I encourage all of you today to hang out with us after the second service as we have a time of fun, food, and fellowship in the courtyard. Our whole church is invited right after the second service. Someone once said, only the consciousness of a purpose that is mightier than any man and worthy of all men can fortify and in spirit and compose the souls of men. I do agree with that. Only the consciousness of a purpose that is mightier than any man and worthy of all men can fortify and in spirit and compose the souls of men. When we read our text today, two words stand out apparent in my mind and prayerfully yours as well. Jesus, in essence, says this is what it takes to be my disciple. And as we have rehearsed the last few weeks, there is a difference in a disciple and a follower. There's a difference in a disciple and a follower. There are a lot of followers but few people want to undergo the disciplines that it takes to be effective as one who advances the kingdom of God in their generation. And so he speaks now to draw this differentiation in view of all the people that are listening. And he said, if you're going to be my disciple, you have to have two things, two key essential ingredients. Number one is you have to walk with a fortitude or a resolve or a galvanized spirit about who you are and where you are going. Therefore, you must not only have fortitude, but you also must have foresight. And he says, he begins to talk to them about intentions. And he says, which one of you intending to build a tower? And I find it interesting the vocabulary he uses because the word tower here means a place of observation or a watchtower. The place that is set on top of the fort or the fortified region in order to observe those who would be coming in as enemies or opponents to your particular cause. In other words, build high and build strong. And I like the fact that Jesus, when he's talking to these people, some people about being disciples, he talks to them about building big. And I told you in the beginning of this series, and I want to challenge you again, every one of you personally, think big dream big see big imagine big see yourself better than you are right now somebody ought to clap their hands and give God praise today so he says count the cost make a correct calculation in other words what is this going to cost me how is it going to affect my life and he says in order to do that you must sit down and count the cost I told you prophetically in the beginning of this series that I believe we have embarked into a time and a term of building and rebuilding in the kingdom of God. Many people are beginning to build and then other people have that Isaiah 61 anointing where he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me too. And he lists the mission and part of the mission is to rebuild places that used to be inhabited, places that used to be effective. So we ought to be uh, activated in two areas of our life today. Either we should be building something or we should be rebuilding something. And I really believe that. So I've been talking to our staff, for example, about three particular things. First of all, when you peer into your future, you must have a mindset of form 
forming, then forging, and then fortifying. Forming, forging, and then fortifying. The word fortify is interesting because it means to add strength. It means to make strong or to re-strengthen. So anytime you talk about the idea of fortifying a thing, when you get done with the fortifying, it should be stronger than it was before you ever addressed it. And God is bringing us to a place that we be, should be walking in the security of our personal identity along with incorporating our purpose to a greater cause. In other words, none of us can be as effective alone as we can when we merge our strengths to other people. One can put a thousand to flight, the Bible says, but two can put 10,000 to flight. So it's to make strong or to add strength. When I was thinking about each one of us personally and individually, I was thinking about 2 Peter chapter 1. And y'all excuse me, I know it's fun day, but I feel function today. I want to preach to you today until you believe you can be everything that God ordained you to be. That when you leave this building today, that all doubt, distress, discouragement, despondency, and depression has left your life. And you are fully assured and confident that you are going to be everything God anointed you to be. Before you ever walked on this earth, you had a preordained assignment. You had a pre ordained plan by God and nothing by any means is going to stop you from being everything God created you to be. The devil, disease, discouragement, anything that's come against you is going to be obliterated by the power of God today and by the word of God today and by the blood of the lamb today and by the apostolic prophetic decrees that's going to go forth in this sanctuary. As a matter of fact, I declare and decree now every generational curse is broke off your life every generational spirit that's not of God is cast out of your life now I need a celebratory people to jump up one time put your hands together open your mouth and give God praise for what he is about to do Lord I praise you today glory to God bless your name Jesus bless your name bless your name Come on, high five two people one more time and tell them I told you it's on right now. So when Peter addresses the people in his second epistle, he said there's some things we just need to be continually added to our personal life. And he says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 5, I'll skip some of this. He says beside all this, he said give all diligence. And he said add to your faith virtue. Everybody say add. He said add to your virtue knowledge. Everybody say add. Add to your knowledge temperance. Everyone say add add to your temperance patience add to your patience godliness add to your godliness brotherly kindness add to your brotherly kindness charity every day ought to be a day of adding Add something to your character. Add something to your purpose. Add something to your walk in God. And he said, if you do these things in increasing measure, you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in your life. If you will continually add, you will not be barren and you will not be unfruitful. I came to tell you today, too many people trying to serve God have minus signs in their life. They have things can continually being subtracted and things continually leaving their life but pastor Rick came by to tell you that God is not a God of division he's not a God of subtraction God is a God of addition and multiplication and God is about to add to your life in every way and you have to take responsibility Everyone jump up, high five, two people and tell them, add, baby, add today. Add, add, add. Keep adding, keep adding. 
keep piling it on until you start feeling fortified and still you until you start feeling invincible until you start feeling like anything you touch is gonna prosper too much loss too many subtractions it's time for additions and multiplications bump to people and tell them excuse me I'm getting bigger baby things are about to get better and bigger in my life because God is adding to me on every side come on everybody do this and say I see increase all around me I see increase all around me amen shout it three more times add 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 amen I'm trying to be calm but I feel something pushing me in my back I feel something up in my spirit telling me to tell you that the devil has done everything he could do to stop you to subtract from you but you are still here with your praise on and God is about to pile blessing on you Come on, tell somebody, not room enough to receive what God is about to add to us. Amen. Fortify. Fortify. Fortify yourself. Add. 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 Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Can I finish this? Let me finish this real, real quick. No greater builder. You can be seated. Give me 10 minutes, y'all, and I'm done. Somebody said, uh, Pastor Rick, are you trying to incite our passion today, or are you trying to make us excited, enthusiastic? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, let me fix that for you. Yes. I didn't come here to tantalize your analytic, analytical, uh, logical, uh, sane ways about everything is methodical and this, and I came to disrupt all your normality and to tell you, listen, man, it ain't nothing boring about God. God's exciting. God is a God that looks at an empty earth that is void and chaotic and says, I can do something with that. And he starts adding light. And he starts adding dirt. And he starts adding things to what was... Has anybody in here ever felt like you was a nothing going nowhere? That's when you were a perfect candidate for God to say, I can add to your nothingness and I can make you something. All right, leave it alone. Let me see. Nehemiah chapter 4 is probably the greatest chapter of building or rebuilding under the anointing of the governor Nehemiah. The Bible says in chapter 4, verse 1, it came to pass when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth. How many of you know when you're building or rebuilding, somebody always going to get mad? And take great, took great indignation and mocked us. That's another thing, too. You know you're doing good when people talk about you. The Bible says, beware when all men speak well of thee. Amen. If somebody ain't saying something bad, you ain't doing something right. And he spake before the brothers in the army of Samaria. This is Sanballat. And he said, what, are these, what do these feeble Jews, languid, weak, frail people, he says, now, second question, will they fortify themselves? Big question. Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Tobiah the Ammonite was with him, another one. And he said, even that which they do build, listen to the mockery. If a fox go up on it, he'll break it down. So watch what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah says, hear God for we are being despised now. And I don't start praying like this. He said, turn their reproach on their head. I'm not gonna pray this part. He said, cover not their iniquity. Man, that's strong. This man said, Lord, don't even forgive their sin. Let not their sin be blotted out from before you. Nehemiah praying mean. Have you ever prayed a mad prayer? Like, Lord, kill them. (laughs) 
you didn't really mean it, but you did. You just going through so much. You just pulled over and say, "Lord, can you just take them out?" I, I've never prayed like that, but he sure is. <laughs> he said, for they have provoked you to anger before your builders. Now, here's my question. How does Nehemiah know God is mad? Watch what he said. They made you mad, God. <laughs> How many of you know that we think God's mad when we get mad? I'm mad. I know you're mad. So go ahead and handle this business. <laughs> oh, Lord, hold up. I got to catch my breath here. So he says, we built the wall, and the wall was joined together into the half thereof. Listen to this. For the people had a mind to work. Can I tell you it's hard to work with people who don't have a mind to work? Let me break it down like this. It's hard to build with people who don't have a mind to build. But boy, if you ever do find a group of people that say, go ahead and do what you have in your heart because we're with you on this, then there's nothing you cannot accomplish. There's nothing you can't do. Two concerns, and I want to point these out to you very quickly before I go forward. The antonym of the word fortify means to decrease or to weaken a thing. There's no greater jeopardy for a community than when, it, when they begin to deal with warfare from the inside. When you read verse 10 of Nehemiah chapter 4, the Bible says, Judah said, the strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed and there's much rubbish and we're not able to build this wall. Now, it's bad, Trey, when the praise team starts saying, <laughs> this ain't nothing but trash. Your praise, li Judah, the praise people start saying, we can't do this. We working with trash. It means pulverized things. It, it actually has this insinuation that this, this thing has been too much to ever, through too much to ever live again. I said it before, I'm going to tell you again. Disengage from anything that devalues who you are and what you're doing. Eliminate any input that speaks contrary to God's intention for, for your life. I told you before, I'm going to tell you one more again. Some of y'all need to hit that unfriend button. Unfriend on the Facebook. You need to hit that delete button on your roster, on your phone. Start eliminating people from your life that always devalue who you are and are always condescending to what you're doing. In other words, tell them like that girl said on YouTube, I ain't got time for this. <laughs> and the sad part about it is, it's bad when the people in the church are talking worse than the people outside the church. <laughs> The most optimistic people in the world ought to be the people in your own church. The most pats on your back you ought to receive is from the people sitting next to you right now. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and practice optimism. Pat a few people and tell them you're not only going to make it, but you're going to be successful. Your best day is still in front of you. Come on now, nah, you know what? I'm, I'm serious about it. Get up, get up, amen. Go hug two people and tell them your best day is in front of you. Your best day is not behind you, amen. Be encouraged, hang in there. Your best day is in front of you. Man, I don't have time to preach this whole thing. I really want to preach you. Amen. Uh, I said two. Y'all act like y'all having a family reunion in here. I said two. Some of y'all got up and started apologizing to folks. I'm sorry. Whoa! 
Lord, Lord. Come on, high five to people and tell them we got this. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. It's time to fortify. It's time to come together. Come on, high five two people and tell them it's time for us to get together. I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. Lord have mercy. Watch what he says. Watch what he says and I'm done here. He says we are too far apart in verse 14. He said we too far apart from each other. We too far apart from each other. Everybody say it again. It's time for us to get together. Let me tell you, the enemy knows when there's separation, when there's divisions. And he sees that as openings and opportunities to come in and destroy churches and destroy families and destroy communities and destroy cities. But whenever we lock up arm to arm, heart to heart, purpose to purpose, mission to mission, objective to objective and say we can do this thing together and if the enemy touches one of us, he touches all of us then you have raised up an army that is invincible, that is going forward in the cause of Christ in the earth. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will find a place of agreement, that you will find a place of activation, that you will find a place that you can be everything that God called you to be. Can you shout amen right there? Amen. I'll preach the rest of this on Wednesday. I'm halfway done. Half the message good enough for you? I'll preach the other half on Wednesday. Because I'm about to, I'm about to get into this thing where he says, David, he said, I, I was so serious about it that when I realized the attack that was coming against us, he said, I spoke to a certain group of people and he said, I set them in lower places. And he said, and then I spoke to another section of people and I set them in higher places. Because some people can't deal with lower places. He said, there's only a certain group of people you can trust with the low places. Oh Lord, I, see I, I didn't get to preach the message. I just got through the halfway point. Boy, when you get in that low place people, People that know how to deal with the valley. People that know how to deal with dirt. People that know how to deal with mud. You know what I know? Let's stand. I know there's a group of people in here that says, I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. I'm ready to be fortified. I'm ready to be fortified. I'm ready for God to add to my life. I'm ready for God to add people that count to my life. I'm ready for God to add strength to my life through other people. I'm ready for God to add things to me. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The best way to fortify your future is by putting the kingdom where it's supposed to be. And that's first. When you put the kingdom first, God fortifies your future by adding everything you need to you. And there are people in here today that you have not kept God number one. You've not kept his kingdom first in your life. Church is no longer a priority. The house of God is no longer essential for you. You need to get your stuff back in order so that God can continue to add and fortify you for your future. If you want God to place you properly today, 
I want you to leave your seat. You say, Pastor, this is my word. I want you to come down here very quickly. You said something you preached today, Pastor, hit me. One sentence, one word, hit me. This is my word. And I'm ready for God to fortify my future.